Pastors Chooks and Toyino Goye. Pastors Chooks and Toyino Goye are the lead pastors of Resurrection Life Church, Johannesburg, South Africa. They are passionate about building families and raising men and women who transform and uplift the standard of life in their communities through understanding and applying biblical principles. Pastor Chooks and Pastor Toyin frequently host workshops, seminars and conferences for transformation. Some of their programs include Kingdom Financiers Conferences, Dream Achievers Conferences, Marriage Enrichment Courses and Seminars, For Wives Only Seminars, Single Ladies Boot Camps and Limitless Men Seminars. They are the founders of the Power of Women Academy, a group mentorship for high-impact women, and host the annual Power of Women Conferences and Amazing Power of Women Broadcasts. For more information, please visit www.idelight.co.za and www.reslife.org.za or WhatsApp plus 27814210835. Good evening. Welcome to another edition of the Amazing Power of Women broadcast. I am Dr. Chok Sugoye. I bring you uh, warm greetings this Thursday evening as we engage on the amazing power of women. A few years ago, I wrote the book, The Amazing Power of Women. Uh, it's, been, it's, been, yeah, it's been a few years now. Uh, the, this book has huge, huge revelation on the power that God has put in the female image of God, which is called woman. Uh, there's the male image of God, which is called the man, and the female image of God, which is called the woman. Uh, a woman is powerful. <laughs> woman is powerful. There's so much that, that we documented in that book about the power that woman carries. And it's important that you read this book. If you are a woman or you're a man that has a woman in your life, you need to understand who woman is, what woman is, what God has done in woman, and, and understand the powers that she has and how to use that power wisely. God has uh, given us the privilege to host this uh, broadcast from the revelation that came from that book. And uh, we, know we thank God for the privilege and the opportunity to continue to shed light on the amazing power of woman. We are uh, on for another uh, exciting teaching tonight on uh, the women of the Bible. Women of the Bible. It's a series we are doing where we are looking at various characters uh, in the Bible of female image, images of God, women in the Bible, as to the power God gave them. How did they use it? Whether they used it positively or they used it negatively. And what can we learn from them? Uh, because the Bible tells us that the, the things written in the Bible are written for our instruction. They are written for our example so we can learn from those characters. So we're looking at characters both in the New Testament and the Old Testament. We've seen people who used the power well and produced a lot of benefit. And we're seeing women who didn't use their power well and they have created problems for themselves and for their world. So tonight, we are on for another uh, interesting uh, character study. Tonight, we are looking at the woman Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, Elizabeth, the wife of Zachariah. That's our, our focus tonight, Elizabeth. Her story is found in Luke chapter 1, verse 5 to 26, and verse 39 to 41. That's the only place in scriptures where we find the story of this woman, Elizabeth. So, so let's, let's dive in and, and look at her uh, uh, from what the Bible tells us about her in these passages that I've just cited. Elizabeth comes from the tribe of Aaron, or she is a descendant of Aaron, and Aaron is a Levite, as we know. So she comes from the tribe of Levi, uh, and from directly from the line of Aaron. Now, now, one of the things we know about her is that her husband, Zachariah, is also from, from that tribe. You see, the, the, the tribe of Levi, uh, they married from the tribe of Levi, <laughs> basically. So, so she is a daughter of Aaron, so, so she understood priestly office and priestly assignment. Her husband is a priest. 
Her father was a priest. You know, their, their whole lineage is the lineage of priests. So, so this woman comes from a godly lineage where the, the worship of God and the followership of God is paramount. All right? She is described in verse 6 as a righteous, uh, obedient, devout, and blameless uh, follower of God. You know, she, she, there were people who lived according to the law of Moses. They did their best to fulfill the law and to follow the ordinances of God. This is where she's coming from. So, so this woman is a godly woman. This woman is someone who had done her best to follow God closely, to obey God in everything that she can, to walk with God. This is very important. And in all of that devotion, in all of that uh, submission and service unto God, she was barren. She was barren. And that's why we are studying her. What do you do when you have done your part? You have followed God. You have lived according to the word. But there is a, a, an issue in one area of your life or another. Maybe you are barren and you can't conceive a child, you are unable to find a life partner to get married in a godly way, or maybe success, you know, you have done everything and money is not coming. You have lived according to your best ability to abide by the word of God and the principles of God, but there is one area of your life, maybe an ill health or a, a situation in your body that is just refusing to bow, that's just the reason to align with the word of God. What do you do? What do you do? See, this was where Elizabeth found herself. Her husband is a godly man. She is a godly woman. They have lived to the best of their ability according to the word of God. The Bible said they were blameless. They were blameless, meaning that you can't fault them on anything. They have made sure that they followed the word of God strictly. They had have, they have followed strictly. And this is where they are. No baby. And you know, in those days, in the times she lived in, your validation as a woman, your validation as a woman is hinged on your ability to give birth to a child. <laughs> yes, so, so if you're a woman and you hadn't given birth to a child, you are, not, you are not a proper woman. You are seen as a disgrace. You are seen as a reproach. Yes, there's a reproach on you. Barrenness was viewed very harshly in those times. Barrenness, to not have a baby. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. What kind of woman are you? So, so, so people looked down on you. People despised you. You had no space in social, in, in social life. You know, in social life, you, had, you, were, you, were a, you, you, you were a disgrace. You were a reproach. And that's how they saw you. So, so imagine being godly and then carrying this burden of reproach, of barrenness. And then you say, you know, I, I, I've seen people, I've seen people, you know, get tired of waiting on God that they decide to take the laws into their hands and they decide to do things their own way, they, they abandon God, they abandon his word, and they compromise because they were tired of waiting on God. But that was not the case of Elizabeth. What have you been waiting on God for? And he's taking a while, and it looks like God is not listening, and it looks like God is not being fair. People, young people are coming, and they're getting married, and they're falling pregnant. Nine months later, they're dropping a baby. You have been married now for decades, decades, Maybe four decades, maybe five decades. The Bible said they were old. They were old. So, so they probably were in their 80s, 70s or 80s. Probably she got married in her late 20s, late, late 19, I mean late teens or early 20s. Now she's in the 80s. So it's almost like 50, 60 years of standing in there and believing God. And it's not coming through. And yet she remained God, godly. And yet she remained devout. And yet she remained submitted to the things of God. And yet she remained blameless. I want to say to you, you know, what do you do with your power when 
you have worked with God. You have served God faithfully to the best of your ability. I know that none of us is perfect. None of us, you know, gets everything right all the time. But to the best of your ability, you have remained faithful to God. You have done, you have sown seeds. You have done fasting. You have done praying. You have done this. You have done that. And the situation re still remains unchanged. What do you do? Do you, do you uh, throw away your devotion and, you know, just go to town to sort your problem your own way? Or do you still continue to remain faithful and loyal to the Lord? For Elizabeth, she did. She remained faithful and loyal to the Lord. And this is the lesson for us, that this problem, if you remain faithful, there's an end. <laughs> and the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. There is an end. There is a fulfillment. There is a fulfillment. It may not have happened yet, but there is a fulfillment. If you are not going to give up, you will win. Oh, yes, if you're not going to give up, you will win. If you will persist and continue to work godly and continue to work faithful and continue, you will win. This was the story of Elizabeth and her husband. So the man continues to serve. And one day during his allotted time of service as a priest, an angel meets him in the temple. An angel comes to him in the temple. And the angel said to him, your wife is going to take in and she's going to fall pregnant and she's going to have a baby boy. And his name shall be called John. And you know, all that prophecy from the angel. And because Zechariah had <laughs> been for a while waiting on the Lord, trusting the Lord, believing God for answers, and he hadn't come, he had gotten tired. He had gotten weary. So when the angel made the pronouncement to Zechariah, Zechariah doubted. Zechariah said, how do I know that this is going to be true? How do I know that you're not lying to me? How do I know that, you know, <laughs> that I, I, I should stake my faith out on what you have said? And the angel said, do you know who, who I am? <laughs> do you know who it is that is talking to you? I am Gabriel, the one who stands in the presence of God Almighty. That, in other words, don't joke with what I'm saying. I am the one who stands in the presence of God Almighty. I have brought you word from the throne of grace, from the throne of the Almighty, and you are saying, how do we know it's going to come to pass? Well, I'm going to do this to you as a sign <laughs> uh, so that you, you will not use your mouth to, to abort this miracle. You are, going to be, you are going to be unable to speak until that baby is born. You're not going to be un unable to speak. So the Bible says that he came out from the temple and he couldn't talk again. His ability to talk was taken away from him. The angel took it and he was dumb. He arrives home. Can you imagine? Arriving home and his wife is, you know, trying to welcome him and he can't talk. He cannot talk. He's now doing sign language. Uh, you know, it seemed like he was, he was literate because he could write. So he, he, you know, he's not doing sign language. He's you know, doing sign to his wife to bring him something to write so that he can explain what happened. Imagine a, a, a Elizabeth's state when the husband is saying, uh, this, is, this is the situation. So, but I noticed that Elizabeth believed what the husband said. Elizabeth had more faith than her husband. Elizabeth had more faith than her husband. When the husband came and said, an angel came today, an angel said, we're going to have a baby, an angel said this about the baby, the woman said, let it be to me, as you have said. She believed it. She didn't doubt it. She didn't contest it. She didn't challenge it. She didn't question it. She believed. What a woman of God. What a woman of God. Despite Many decades of standing and believing for that promise, she didn't give up. I don't know who you are, but if you are not going to give up, you will win. If you're not going to throw in the towel, you will win. Oh, I don't know what it is you're believing for. Maybe you're one of those who have, you know, achieved everything in your life, in your career, in your, in your business, you know. And money has come, and, but one thing hasn't come. Maybe husband. Or you found husband, maybe you are in the same situation with Elizabeth, baby hadn't come. 
I want you to note what El Elizabeth did. Elizabeth did not allow her situation to give her a, an opportunity to abuse her power. No, she did not abuse her power. She didn't abuse her power by, you know, submitting to unbelief and, 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 and doubt. She didn't abuse her power by, you know, becoming a, what else, you know? I mean, look at a, 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 a Sarah, Sarah, a, Abraham's wife. She was in the same situation. And after 13 years or so of waiting and believing God for this baby that God promised, and he wasn't coming, she decided to make a plan. <laughs> she decided to make a plan. He, she called her husband and said, please, take the maid. Take the maid. I'll move out of the bedroom. Take the maid. And uh, she decided to make a plan. That's what I'm talking about. That was an abuse of power. You abuse of your power as a woman. El, El, Sarah abused her power. She, she vacated her position and gave it to a, a concubine. Gave her maid to become a concubine to her husband. She vacated her position and gave it to somebody. That's an abuse of her power. But not Elizabeth. Instead, Elizabeth stood there. When they told her it was happening, she said, let it be so. She said, let it be so. And she believed God and she took in. Now, look, look at in verse 25, Luke chapter 1, verse 25. Look, I want you to see this. Thus the Lord has dealt with me. In the days when he looked on me, he, to take away my reproach among people. To take away my reproach among people. See, can you see? So, so she carried this reproach for so many years. But she did not allow this social reproach to affect her relationship with God. She did not allow the social reproach to affect her relationship with God. People get weak. People get tired. People get weary. Because they can't stand the social pressure of, you know, their situation that has not been, uh, 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 that has not gotten an answer from, from heaven. They, they, they get tired. They get tired. Some people stop going to church. Some people stop giving and say, I've been giving since. I can't sow anymore. I'm tired. I'm not doing it anymore. Not this woman. She carried that reproach for as long as she carried it. But she remained faithful. And thank God now the turnaround has come. Thank God now the baby has come. She is going to be pregnant. So, so see, 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 see the scenario that was at the, home, at the house. Her husband is now dumb. <laughs> Her husband is now dumb. She can't, he can't talk. And they, she, he has to live with a husband that cannot talk. I can imagine how, you know, Dina can be. In that, now they can't, you know, they can't converse. The man will have to write one or two things on paper to signal to his wife what he wants to eat. To signal to his wife when he wants to go to bed. I mean, it, it was just... But you know what? She didn't get angry at God. There's no record in the Bible. She got angry at God. She got ang No, no. She just, you know, remained focused on what God promised. And she took in. And the Bible says, you know, after she took in. Look, look at verse 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph. Of the house of David, the virgin's name was Mary. So, so she carried that pregnancy when she conceived. The Bible says she hid herself for five months. She hid herself for five months. I think that, 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 that is in verse 24. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived. And she hid herself five months, saying... Why did she hide herself? Why didn't she announce the pregnancy? Why didn't she, you know, uh, go out and flaunt her, her baby bump? Why did she hide herself? Because she understood something. This thing is a miracle. This child is supernatural. These instructions that are given regarding the lifestyle of this child is supernatural. So I need to take my time and you know, incubate this thing. I need to take my time and prepare myself so she hid herself for five months. Let me tell you something I learned from this. This woman was an expert in 
knowing how to carry the program of God. There are some times when, when God is wanting to birth something through you that God withdraws you or de desires that you withdraw from public, uh, uh, what do you call, public uh, show, showing, just to withdraw for a season. For her, five months she withdrew. Five months she incubated this baby. She didn't want to, you know, go talking about it. She didn't want to go mixing with people. She didn't want, she withdrew from social life for five months to carry this thing. And then, and, and, and I noticed that heaven worked with her. Heaven worked with her as she hid because the angel was sent on the sixth month. The angel was sent on the sixth month. The angel went to Mary and announced to Mary, Mary is her cousin. Elizabeth and Mary are cousins. So angel went to Mary and told Mary that she was going to also be pregnant by a supernatural act. And then the angel told Mary that your cousin Elizabeth, whom you have not seen the last five months, the reason why you have not seen her is that she is pregnant. She is pregnant. The angel told her that Elizabeth is pregnant and she has been in hiding for the last you know, five, six months. So, so Mary had to come to Elizabeth's house to come and meet Elizabeth. Where, so, so the season of hiding, it, it was, you know, sort of over, kind of. Because now a, a Mary was being uh, informed about it and Mary took the initiative to go and spend time with Elizabeth. Now, now, now what do we learn from this? How do we apply this truth? There are each one of us, we are carriers of divine agenda. Every one of us. The Bible talks about in, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, of the things that had been uh, destined for us to, to bring forth good works that were decided on before, before time began, that we are supposed to bring forth into the earth. Every one of us. So, what it means is this that there are seasons when we need to withdraw from too much activity in order to incubate and gestate what God is bringing to us. And, and when those seasons are, are on us, we, we need to understand them and then act accordingly. You see, Elizabeth acted accordingly and the heavens supported it. So for five months, it was herself and her husband uh, and, and her immediate household, if they had servants and so on, that were, you know, in their own space, incubating this thing, gestating this program of God, this agenda of God. I want to ask you, what, what is God wanting to birth through you? A movement, an organization, uh, 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 a hospital, a, a, a pharmacy, a, an engineering firm, a law firm, a ministry, I don't know what God is wanting to birth through you. A, a people, would you pay attention? Would you pay attention and withdraw for a season? I don't know how long the season is going to be. I don't know. You, between you and God, you know, but, but they say there's a need to withdraw so that you can contemplate deeply. You can prepare deeply. You can get state and carry this thing to fruition and birth this agenda. You know, m maybe a lot of money God wants to put in your hands. Yes, through, through the business you want, he wants you to birth. That is requiring you to withdraw so that you can understand the details of how God wants you to operate. Didn't, it, didn't Moses, you know, go into a mountain for 40 days to receive the blueprint on how the tabernacle was going to be made? Moses withdrew for a season and God gave him the details, showed him the details of how he was going to build that tabernacle. It's a, it's a pattern of God. So, so maybe God is asking you to withdraw. Withdraw and, and incubate this thing properly and birth this thing properly and spend time just communing with God to understand how you are going to operate, how you are going to flow. And God will support you. God will create the enabling environment to support you to get this thing done. Oh, yes. God will, you know, help you. He said, but what are we going to eat? Don't worry. Trust God. 
you will see how food is going to come. What are we going to, uh, how am I going to do this? Trust God. All you want to be sure is that God is leading you. And once you get that confirmation of leading, just go ahead and do the, the, the need for. Pay the price to gestate this dream properly, to gestate this vision properly, to incubate it, to carry it well so that you can bet this thing and it can fulfill the mind and the purpose of God. So, so she carried this baby and there's something about this baby. This baby was filled with the Holy Spirit from her mother's womb. Man, how, how do you carry a baby that is full of the Holy Ghost from the womb? That means that you that, that provided the womb, you also must be filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> because how can your womb be filled with the Holy Spirit and the rest of your body is not filled with the Holy Spirit? So, so, so Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She was a carrier of the Holy Spirit. What does that tell me? When you are, listen, there is a dispensation of grace that is released towards you when God wants to birth something through you. And if you will yield to it, you will see the empowerment of the Spirit of God come upon you. You will see the empowerment of the Spirit of God come upon you. If you will yield to it, if you will pay attention, if you will say yes to the Lord, listen to me. The Bible says that the, the commandments of God are not grievous, they're not burdensome. The things that God is asking, they are not that overwhelming and so difficult. If you just yield to him, you will see grace come. You will see power come. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She, as in literally her body carried the, a measure, a, 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 a measure of the power and the presence and the treasures of the third person of the Trinity. The Holy Ghost. Her womb was filled with it. Her, her breast was filled with it. Her head was filled with it. Everywhere was filled with the Holy Ghost. Because she aligned herself to carry what God wanted her to carry. I'm asking you a question. That big dream that is going to change the world, that God wants you to birth, are you, are you, are you, going to, are you carrying it well? Are you paying the price to carry it well so you can, you can incubate that dream and bring it through? Are you, are you going to allow the Lord to, to, to use you to incubate that vision, that movement, Maybe a nation, maybe a people, maybe a ministry. I don't know. But you need to carry it well. You need to pay the price to carry it well. Stop being casual. Stop being nonchalant. Stop being flippant. God wants to do stuff with you. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost because she said yes. <laughs> you remember at this time, at this time, people did not carry the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon people and they lifted. He came upon people and they lifted. The indwelling of the Spirit effectively started at Pentecost. But here, Elizabeth is tapping into the powers of a time to come. She is now filled with the Holy Spirit in a dispensation when the Holy Spirit was not poured out yet. Why? Because she made up her mind, I will carry the agenda of God. I will carry it very well. And what do we see when Mary comes? The Bible doesn't tell us that the angel told Elizabeth that Mary was going to be pregnant. No. When Elizabeth picked it up in the spirit because she was filled with the Holy Ghost. She picked it up. When Mary came and Mary greeted her, the Bible says when she heard the greeting of Mary, the baby in her womb leaped. And then she picked up that Mary was carrying the Messiah. <laughs> She picked it up prophetically. That's to tell you how sensitive this woman was. How in tune she was in the spirit. I'm asking you, woman of God, are you in tune with the spirit of God? Are you in tune with the spirit of God? Are you just walking with your head? You're just, you know, th thinking things in your head and coming up with ideas or you're filled with worldliness like Lot's wife? Or you <laughs> decide, I, do you want to be used by God or not? See, she was so sensitive that she picked up on the agenda of heaven. I'm praying for you today. I'm praying for myself even that we will be sensitive to pick up on the agenda of heaven. We pick up on what the Father is doing and incubate it properly and bet it properly and defeat the, uh, the, 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 the agenda of the kingdom of darkness in the earth. 
Satan, Satan is up to no good in our times. But Bible says we are seen about grace much more about. And I'm saying there are people who are required of God to be carriers of projects of grace, projects of grace to bring and birth grace into the earth that the agenda of God may be carried out. Are you going to be one of those people? Can you yield yourself and be sensitive for the Spirit of God to use you? Hallelujah. One more thing we learned from Elizabeth. Elizabeth receives instructions on how she was going to raise this unique child. <laughs> this child is very unique. You know, his diet is unique. And, you know, his hair, no razor gets. I mean, she receives all this and she follows through. She raises this child as God will have her raise this child. I'm asking you now a question. How are you raising your own children? Are you raising them in fear? Are you raising them in line with God's plan for their lives? Do you have an idea of the prophetic uh, 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 destination, the prophetic destiny of the child that God has given to you or the children God has given to you? Do you know so that you can steward the plan of God for these children? So you can steward what God wants to do and guide that child to fulfill the will of God. Or are you drowning this child with your worldliness? Are you drowning this child with your own weaknesses? Are you drowning this child with your own frailties? Are you drowning this child with your own bad habits? Your own, you know, uh, 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 indiscipline in the things of God. Are you transferring to this child? Or you are raising this child according to how God Almighty wants this child to be raised. In other words, will this child fulfill destiny because you murdered this child properly? Or will this child struggle to fulfill destiny because you are doing things wrong? Because you are not doing it the way God wants it to be done? These are big questions that you need to answer as a woman today. If you have children, what are you doing? Do you know where, where God is taking these children so that you can walk with God for the children to be guided properly to arrive at God's destination for their lives? She was a great mother. She raised a very special child. And I know that God trusted her to be able to do it, and she did not disappoint. Otherwise, she wouldn't have been chosen. I mean, anybody else could have been chosen to, to bring John the Baptist to the world. But she was chosen because God could trust her, because she has proven to be trustworthy. I'm saying the child that God has given to you, God saw you as trustworthy. That's why he gave you that child. You may not have even been ready for the child. You may not have even been, but God saw you are trustworthy. Can you just step up and, and fulfill the purposes of God for your life and for the life of your children in the name of Jesus? You know, she was an encouragement to Mary. I'm, 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 I'm rounding up now. She was a big encouragement to Mary. You know, Mary was dealing with a phenomena that was not easy to deal with. Mary did not have sexual relations with any man, and here she is pregnant. <laughs> and God, you know, the angel told her to, to go to, to Elizabeth and go and draw strength. And Elizabeth was able to encourage her. She lived with Elizabeth for three months. The first trimester of her pregnancy, she was in her cousin's house. So two of them were carrying supernatural projects she knew to go to Elizabeth because she knew that she would find encouragement and support in Elizabeth's life, in Elizabeth's house. I'm asking, do people know that they can come to you for support? Do people know that they can come to you for encouragement? Do people know that they can, they can rely on you for strength to carry what God has given them to carry? Or are you going to be so nonchalant, you are so insensitive to the program of God that you, you even sometimes fight, fight, fight them, negate them, not help them, but the agenda of God. May, meanwhile, God wants to send them to you so that you can steward them, but now your issues, now your carnality is standing in the way and you can't even hear what God is saying. Your carnality is standing in the way, you can't even hear what God is saying. You can't, you can't, you can't even cooperate with God. Thank God that Elizabeth was not carnal. Thank God that Elizabeth was a spiritual woman who could sense so when her cousin came, she welcomed her, she embraced her, she encouraged her, and that helped Mary to carry the Messiah. Maybe people are coming to you who are carrying big things, and God wants you to encourage them 
God wants you to support them. God wants you to, you know, uh, uphold them. Would you be sensitive to, to uphold what God is, is doing? But if you're kind of, you will not pay attention. If you're kind of, you even reject them. You can even send them away. You can even close your door on them and not participate because you are kind of. God have mercy. God is wanting to raise spiritual women who are sensitive to the agenda of the Father, who are sensitive to what God is doing, what God is saying, so they can get behind what God is doing and bet the purposes of God in the earth. I want to stop there tonight. I hope you've learned something from Elizabeth's life. Be that godly, sensitive woman who will hear God and cooperate with God to birth the agenda of God in her own life and help other people. Help other people around her to birth the agenda of God. That's the story of Elizabeth. I'm done tonight. My time is up. I'll see you next time as we continue to study women of the Bible. I am Dr. Chuck Sugohe. Good night. God bless you. Bye-bye. Why are you still single? Do you feel you're not ready yet? Do you say it's not my time yet? Have you made mistakes in the past and now you're stuck in a complicated situation? Or perhaps you've given up totally on the idea of marriage? Why not join Pastor Chuk Sogoye, author of The Amazing Power of Woman book, and his wife, Pastor Toyin, the founders of the Power of Woman Academy, at the next Single Ladies Boot Camp to explore and answer your questions. A big miracle could be waiting for you. For more information, visit www.slbc.co.za or WhatsApp 081-421-0835.